How you doing guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Catamol Diaries. This is episode number four. It, we are following the life story of Lee Catamol pretty much as he goes through his Dutch adventure and we're hoping that he will stay with us forever and a day because we're going to take VV Venlo from the minnows of Dutch football to the conkers. Conkers? The conquerors <laughs> of Dutch football to the kings of Europe. But it's not going to take one season. It's going to take many. But this is how we began in the first season. Not too shabby, ladies and gentlemen. We were expected to come 13th so far. And as you can see, we're up in fourth. We're pushing for them Europa League positions. We're actually pushing for the top end of the table. Well, hoping. We have fallen behind recently. And this is how we've been getting on. So the last time we were together, it was the <laughs> the episode from hell, if anything. A 6-0 defeat to Unstrak to the top of the table, and then the 1-0 defeat to Groningen. We lost again, and that was three games in a row against Feyenoord, the fixture after uh, going down one goal to nil at home. And we just needed to have a quick look at ourselves. We had a team meeting, and we bounced straight back. Everyone was happy and we won by three goals to two in the cup this time against Untracked. We got our revenge for the 6-0 defeat and we came away with our name in the at for the quarterfinals of the KNVB Becker Cup. But we were back in the league and our last game before the winter break and we played Herenveen in the league and it was a 1-0 victory. And a fantastic one at that as well. Away from home, we put in a massive professional performance. And it was icon himself of the club, Mr. Danny Post. The man who we took the captaincy off to give Lee Catamol. He stepped up to the plate and scored his first goal of the season. In, and it was a cracker. And then we had a bit of a break where we had two friendlies. And then we were back in January on the 22nd. where We played in the quarterfinals of the Cup. And we're going to call it the Dutch Cup. And we walked away with a 1-0 victory over Feyenoord. Again, another team that we've lost to recently in the league. And we got our revenge for it. Marley Watkins coming on the right side to edit home for us and put us into the semi-finals of the Dutch Cup. Can you believe it? We've gone on a cup run in our very first season. That was followed up with a derby game at home against Fortuna Sittard. And we've done the double over them this season. We beat them at their place early on this season. And Jerome Sinclair scored in that game as well. And in this one, he scored with only two minutes on the clock. And the fans and me went absolutely insane. They had a play sent off for the 39th minute. And I thought we were going to throw it away. But no, Sinclair off the bench, stood up to the back, smashes it home. Lovely stuff. Then we played RKC, a repeat of the first game of the season where we drew 1-1 at home. Well, this time we walked away with all three points. Damien Van Bruggen, Riyad Brewster and Marley Watkins all getting on the score sheet. Amazing stuff. 3-0 Bosch. And as we go into February, we have just played Vitesse at their place. And we have got a very, very rare draw, if I'm going to be honest with you. This season, especially in the last couple of months, it has either been a win or a loss. But this time, we got a draw and it was a 2-2. And when we normally drew, it's normally a nil-nil draft. But this one was an outstanding game of football. They took the lead twice and we pulled it back twice with Yeboah and Farai. Yes, Manuel Farai. I'm going to show you him in a second. But that leads us up to the two crunch games and two of the big boys that we're going to be playing week after week. Well, actually, on this occasion, we're playing Am Amsterdam Ajax on the Wednesday night in Amsterdam, I meant to say. And then we go and play PSV back at VVV Venlo. Oh, it's going to be a cracking two games. And I can't wait to bring them to you. But we've had a transfer window and we're quickly going to go through the ins and outs because we've got two games to play today. Right, we've had a couple of outs, but only really one notables one. So I'm going to only just show you him. As you can see, we had a player called Stan Van Dyke who went for £80,000 to Wilhelm. He was in our under 19s, he didn't get a game, so I'm not going to go through him. But we have let our left back goal roll Janssen, 29 years of age, 38 out of 100 for our scout summary. It was time for him to move on. He was our backup left back, and he was on quite a bit of money over a thousand pounds a week. So I thought, Do you know what? Let him go and we can bring in a youngster. He wasn't playing many games this season for us. He'd done all right, 6.97 for us. So he wasn't doing too bad. He's gone into the league below and I'm sure he will shine. On to the transfers that actually I am very happy that we made. And we're just going to go straight on to Manuel 
Farai. And Farai is a central midfielder. He can play as an attacking midfielder. He's actually more preferred to that, but we don't play that, so he will play in the centre as an attacking play advanced playmaker. He comes on loan from Borussia Dortmund. He is capped at Holland under 20 level and already he has hit the ground running for us. Two games, one goal, average rating 7.35. Both of those appearances have come off the bench. I'm very excited to have this kid on board. Followed up with Joshua Zerkzy, and he is a current ability of three and a half star potential to go absolutely through the roof. Personality ambitious. He plays for the under 20 Dutch team as well. We've picked them both up from that international squad. I liked what I saw. I thought, you're going to come in. I'm not paying him any money per week. Comes from Bayern Munich. So we have gone and raided Bundesliga for two big potentials. Then we needed a defender again and a bit of a backup one. And I just needed someone that could play right, centre and left. And I looked at Luca here, Colani. And I thought, you'll do. <laughs> could play either for central defender. And after the last episode where we lost by six goals to, six goals to nil, I just needed that extra central defender as well because I just don't want that ever to happen to us again. And also he could play straight across the back four. So he's the perfect fit for me. Only two star current ability, potential though to go through the roof. So I'm happy we just got him on board and he's going to be a backup for us. But our signing of the transfer window has got to be, is it Tafe Chong? Right, he's the guy that plays for Manchester United with the big bushy hair. Yes, you might know who he is now. He's a youngster coming through. Holly Gunnar Solskjaer seems to love him. He brings him on when he can to play in games. He's had a few Premier League appearances this season. He came on in the big game against Paris Saint-Germain last season when Manchester United knocked the uh, French Giants out of the Champions League. And I just think we've got some side in here. Even though Marley Watkins has been doing a fantastic job for us on that right side, I just think this is the kid at 20 years of age. He shouldn't be playing for someone like me. He should be playing for a much higher team. And I think we've picked up an absolute steal here. It's only costing us under £25,000 for the full loan that we've got for six months. And I'm going to try and get him back in for next season as well because I think this kid is going to be a bit of a world beater. He is capped at under 21 level at this moment in time. And you know what, kids? I'm happy to have Chang on board. And then last but not least, we also just needed a bit of a backup and we just wanted a bit of a wing back as well. And I went and raided Jordan Zimura, who only cost me £400 per week. And it was the last day of the transfer window. We just needed to get a left back in just to give us that bit more cover. He comes from Bournemouth. He's got pretty decent potential. I signed him because he signed from Charlton, went to Bournemouth, not really played that much. And then he's just come over to us. He's not going to get much, much game time. But if we've got injuries in all the places that he can play, then he can fit in and he'll do his job better than someone else will. Right, kids, that's it. Here we go. It's Ajax. It's actually in three days' time, so I'll see you there in two ticks. Right, game day is upon us. It's the first game of the episode. We are at the Johan Cruyff Arena Amsterdam. Ooh. We're either going to pull something out the bag here or we're going to get a bit of a spanking. It's going to be either the other. Well, it's going to be entertaining. Stick around. <laughs> so the starting formation goes a little bit like this and I have to bring something to you actually before I go into it. Just a bit of news. In recent weeks, while things have been going very, very well for us, the juggernaut himself, Lee Catamull, has not been finding himself in the team. That's right. He's lost his position at the moment after an injury, and Danny Post has been playing pretty outstanding for us there. Catamull is coming back from injury, and he's trying to get his fitness, but he hasn't been playing so much. But he will find himself on the bench today. The team looks a little bit like this. Chris Bau in goal with Decker, Van Bruggen, Rosler, Butner at left back, Post, Van Hoyden, Neil Decker in midfield. Then we've got Chong, Yeboa, and Brewster up top. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, let's get behind the boys. Let's cheer us to three points. So their formation, pretty much what I expect. Well, I say formation starting 11. Oh, na na. What's my name? Oh, na na. In goal, they've got Danny Blind in there. They've got Alvarez in there. Talia Fico at left back, Veltman at centre half, Van der Beek with Tadic. But they've got two lads who I believe may be new signings. Uh, Martin De Room, I know he plays for Atalanta, so yeah, I know he's obviously just signed for them. And they've got a lad called ba Bande up top. So I'm not actually 100% sure where he comes from because normally they have promise up front. But on their bench as well, it, it just shows that they are much 
better than us <laughs> in depth. David Neves can't get on the pitch. Klaus Shannon to Lars also in there as well. So, yeah, scary times. Anyway, let's just go and get the victory and just show them how good we are. They've got two defensive guys in midfield, which is just something for them to be to, to be wary about. Luke Nillis is saying the pressure's off. I'm not. I'm going in there and I'm saying, we're underdogs here, lads. Go and give, lad, give, go and give the fans something to cheer about. And then I'm going to come in there nice and calmly after being as passionate as hell and say that I believe in you and everyone is happy. And here come Ajax. It's Alvarez to blend to... Uh, is that how you say Marazaru? Something like that. Danny Blin back to Van der Beek. Van der Beek will find Taric. And he's offside though. And we will take that in the first seven minutes. Wow. 20 minutes gone though. And there hasn't been a single highlight since then. And we are beating them on stats. Ah! I hate them. I hate them. Is it going to be a penalty? It is a penalty. Ah, oh, they're just like... Just... Terrible, terrible decisions by our players. And it's, oh, you lucky son of a gun. Tadic has scored after a big save by Chris Bauer onto the post by the big German and Tuzan Tadic, the ex Southampton player, has got his 13th goal of the season. You lucky, 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 lucky. Coming up to 30 minutes gone, though, and this is our first real attack of the game. So come on, boys. Here comes post. It's back to post. Can he deliver the ball in? And no, he can't. It's bounced straight back to return to sender. And here comes Tadic. Oh, the defender. How to defender has just been out-muscled. And he's just pushed our player out of the way. Number 13. Is that Rosler? I think it is, isn't it? Tadic goes to the strike. And Rosler is just out-muscled. It's 2-0 after half an hour. And again, I'm going to be bringing you a defeat here. It looks like, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if we end up getting into something like the Europa League, but actually every single game that I bring you live from the season is going to be either a defeat or a draw. Looks like we're going to go to, to the break, though. If we could just hang on, I'll be happy to go in. Well, I won't be happy, but I'll be I'll be more pleased to be free when nil down, and that goes the half-time break anyway. I appreciate your efforts, apparently, Luke Nilly says. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Hopefully they'll go out there and do something. So the first player to come off is going to be John Yeboah. We're going to move him around and we're going to leave Chong on there. And we're going to have him as a winger because he's all left-footed. Um, and then we're going to get John Yeboah off. And we're going to get Marley Watkins on. And we're going to have him as a winger as well. Actually, we'll keep Chong and we'll put him as... Um, in, we'll just leave it as an inverted winger on the left-hand side. And then I think Danny Post, because he's not in the best game of the world, and we'll get Katamol on. As you can see, 72%. So he's coming back from... Um, with well, he's coming back to fitness, shall we say? Uh, Chong's only six point five, so we might look to get him off a bit later on. But there's no one really to to kind of replace him. We have got Jerome Sinclair there if a, if needs be. So twenty five minutes to go, pretty much, and it's still two nil, and we really haven't troubled Ajax at all in the second half so far. We have got those subs on, um, but I don't really feel like I'm going to have to make another substitution right here. And if anything, it could end up three nil and a bit of a batter in here. Until our ball goes in there, that's Tadic. Tadic? Tadic, and he heads it just wide. If we can get a goal, it might just scare them a little bit. That's all I'm saying. Just shout it onto the pitch, lads. Do you know what I mean? Just do, do your best. Try and get a goal. This season's not the season that we're looking to overthrow an Ajax. Let's just say that. That's going to come in the next couple of years. I, I, want, a, I want a good summer. I want some good players and I want to push next year. And then season after, I want to I want to be challenging for the title. If we can, for me this year, oh my God, ball straight back inside until I, I was, I was making a point. Stop playing football behind me. Um, for me this year, if we can get to the final of the cup and possibly win that piece of silverware, I, I will be absolutely ecstatic. Really would be. But here we go. Three minutes to go. Ball goes into the box. And they do clear. We've got Catamol. There he is, the juggernaut, just jumping straight in there. And here comes Decker now. Here comes Van Hoyden. Back to Decker. Can he get the ball into the box? They've pretty much battered it in the second half. They haven't really had a shot just yet. And then Mally Watkins does give the ball away. And here come Ajax. Now pounding forward. And But can we get? Can we break? Oh, I, I questioned that ball uh, from Alexandra Butner. 
I really do. Um, that's a nice ball from them, though. And Danny van der Beek puts the ball wide. I think that's going to be it, though. We've only got one minute of stoppage time, and it was always going to be one of those games, weren't it? I mean, Ajax are they're there, and we're a bit below them in the table, but we're very much quality standard a bit down here. So there's, there's, my, there's my analysis for you. They're better than us. <laughs> See you on to the next game. <laughs> on to the tactics first, though, obviously. Uh, appreciate their efforts. I'm just going to say with the underdogs, good effort, lads. A couple of them switched off. Some of them are happy. Doesn't matter. So this is the confirmation, obviously, the standing as well. And we're still in fourth after 21 games. Who really would have thought that at the start of the season? Hey, not many of you. And we've got PSV coming up here. So a win keeps us in fourth position, obviously. And a draw also does as well. So... Really, really, really important game coming up. They're coming off a 4-1 thrashing of Untracht. That's what I'm saying. Things are starting to now fall into line a little bit. Obviously, PSV, Ajax are the two main teams this season up there. But I'm just looking at some of the teams around us as well. And we've got a chance of getting into the UEFA Cup. I'm not going to lie. We really have got a good chance to fit into the third or fourth place here. Ajax to victory. I'm going to go straight to the next game. I'll see you there in two takes. Right, we're on to the second game of the episode. It's top of the table. PSV Eindhoven traveling over to VVV Venlo. Come on, boys. We can actually do this today. Let's go and get a shock result. We're going to go with the same starting 11 as what we did in the last game. So it's a Grushbauer in goal with Decker, Van Bruggen, Rosler and Butner at the back. Danny Post, Van Hoyden, Decker, Chong, Yaboa, and Brewster on the bench. On the bench, <laughs> up top. On the bench is Lee Catamol. And we've got a bunch of other players on there as well who can come on and try and do something for us in this game. I expect a better performance. We're not going to go in there with no pressure this time. I expect us to try and take the game to PSV. Just looking at their 4 2 3 1 system. And do you know what? I don't really know many players these days for teams like PSV. I really don't. Malin up front rings a bell, but that's about it. I mean, they must be decent. They're top of the team. Top of the team? Top of the table. What am I going to say to them? Luke knows what to say. Have a better performance than last time. I'm going to turn around and say, well, underdogs here. Give the fans something to cheer. Quite a few players are not happy with that. I mean, I don't really care because I've got faith in you. And those players are still not happy. Brilliant. <laughs> Danny Post and Chong are not happy with that team talk. Forget about it. We get the game on the way though, and we are shooting from right to left in our traditional home kit. They're in their away kit today, not their traditional red and white. But I thought that was going to be the end of the highlight there. But no, we shoot straight off the gun. And there is Tony Aboa with an absolute thunder strike. And he replicates Tony Aboa with something like that. What a strike from the edge of the box. And we are off to an absolute flyer ball given away. And I think it's going to score around the 22nd mark here. What a ball to Yeboa, smashes it on the 22nd mark and it hits the back of the net on 21 seconds and we are off to a fantastic start. Last thing we want these to do though is go straight back up the goal, uh, go back up the field and score. So let's try and hold on or try and at least increase our lead. I mean, increasing our lead will be absolutely amazing, but let's just try and hold on for now. Brewster flicks it onto absolutely no one up there, up top though there and that's not the best from him. Um, can we get this ball back? And it's Pereiro. And he's intercepted by Butner. And here comes Alexander Butner now to Yeboah. Yeboah's coming forward. Can he find Van Hoyden? He does. It's to Chong. It's to Chong. He pulls it back. He's... And <laughs> the Manchester United Lowney has made it. VV Venlo 2. PSV Eindhoven nil. What a strike it is. Yeboah pulling the strings once again. Gives it to Van Hoyden. And then Chong. And it looks like he just puts it through the legs of the defender and just whacks it with his left boot. And it flies into the top bag. And it is 2-0 and we're flying. Butner taking it quite slowly there. And, left side. and then he puts the afterburners on. And the ball has kind of fallen nicely for PSV. They get the ball away, but they've not got it away very well. And it comes Van Hoyden, though. Picked up in the middle and he's coming forward with it. He's looking for Decker. Decker did make the run, but it was a bit too late. And then the ball is over the top and it's just a long pass. And it's Malin now. Big save by the goalkeeper. He's going to go for the second shot. It's going to go too wide for him. How are we going to survive this? It's Gutierrez with the ball out to Dumfries on this right-hand side. But that's going to be the end of the highlight. Highlight once again, 14 seconds into the game. What an action back it's been so far. And here comes Dohan. 
and Dohan shoots and it goes straight at the goalkeeper. Highlight, 15, 16 seconds, sorry, into the game. And here comes Rosler now at the back. If we can get a third here, it'll be absolutely insane. New Decker to Van Hoyden to Chong. With his first goal for the club and a fantastic one it was with that. And it comes Decker now. Decker is going the wrong way. Fans Van Hoyden. And then he goes to make the run. But Van Hoyden puts the ball back in there. Doug Fries gets the red away. He's got a fall to Yabower here. Can he get another strike away? No, he gives it to Nodecker. He's got Butner on this left-hand side. But they're going to Chong. Chong finds Butner. And it's Alexander Butner now. That's got a penalty written all over it. And <laughs> it's going to be. Surely VAR is going to be checked. And the referee's got to run all the way over to the side. Is it a ref? Is it a ref? Is it a pen ref? The suspense is killing me. Penalty! <laughs> a massive, massive opportunity. And it's Alexandra Butner to get his first goal for quite a while. And our first penalty for quite a while as well. Can he make it free? Ah! And that bursts the bubble a little bit. And it stays 2-0. If that would have been free, that would have been game, set and match in my opinion. But with only 18 minutes, 19 minutes on the clock. It's an opportunity for PSV now to get back into this game. Right, De Decker on the left, uh, right hand side gives it to Post. The delivery boy gives it to Van Hoyden. Back to Post. To Neo Decker. And Neo Decker now. Ooh, giving the ball away. And it's Sedlik or Sedek. Gives it back. And here comes your bow now to Dom Fries. Dom Fries on the ball. And. Ajax are going to give it away, and Ajax PSV are going to give it away, and Chong, and he's running out of the defence, and he's a little bit like Messi, and he gives it to Brewster! <laughs> what have I just watched? What have I just witnessed, ladies and gentlemen? What a goal! And it is Chong, and he is having the time of his life out there. He runs at Hendricks, and he just takes him for, to the cleaners, gives it inside, and Riyad Brewster says thank you very much uh, for his eighth goal of the season. And it is 3-0, ladies and gentlemen. Can you effing believe this? Can we make it a fourth? Here comes Yeboa to Nordecker. Nordecker out to Butner. Butner now on the left-hand side to Yeboa. Yeboa back to Butner. Butner back to Yeboa. This can't happen, surely. Brewster, Yeboa, back to Brewster. They're just playing it amongst themselves. Butner now, he's got to go for the strike. Surely he hits the side netting. That's unbelievable football. We're now only five minutes away from the break and we do not want to concede here. Concede here and it's game on in the second half. Stay, keep this a clean sheet until the break and we're going to be all right. Is it per Perio or something like that? He's called Gaston Perio. And that, I'm, I'm going to go out and say this, that I don't feel like they deserve that, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Nice little goal, though. I would have been absolutely delighted with that one. Anyway, it is Venlo 3. It is PSV 1. And it looks like we're going to go into the break with that two-goal lead for now. Instead of it being 3, it's 2. You know what? I can't complain about the way that we've been playing, can I? Luke Nillis says to the lads, you've done outstanding, boys. Get yourselves back out there and continue what you're doing. First out of the second half, and it's come just a minute in. Here comes Butner on the left-hand side to Neodecker. Can we reclaim our three-goal lead very, very, very early on? And then hopefully we'll be able to just cruise our way to, to the final whistle. Butner does really well, taking him on. He's really good at that. You're about to chong. Close and a good chance. Half chance, I would say. But I don't think that's going to be the end of the highlight. We're on to that second ball every single time today. Yeboah, as soon as he picks it up, he's just darting straight towards the goal. Is that a foul? The referee's going to review the footage once again. It was a bit of a robust challenge, shall I say. And I've seen him been given, and I've seen him be given against me many a times. And the referee's still looking at it. Is this going to be a penalty? It looked like he got the ball to me, but... The referee says it's not a foul. I would have been surprised if we would have got two VAR results in a row. This game's had everything so far, though. What an outstanding match it's been. I mean, I'm winning 3-1, so I will say that. Coming to the 70th minute, I'm really reluctant to actually change anything just yet. The ball does go to the box, so there's Hendricks and he gets it just wide. Possibly, I actually know we're not going to take Butner off because I'm just thinking about the bench and we haven't really got a left, bit left back on there. I will do one change, though. And that change will be Danny Post off and Lee Catamol on. Just give us 
that bit of protection in front of the defence. 40 minutes left on the clock. Butner apparently is looking absolutely exhausted out there, but like I said, not going anywhere just yet. We do have Christian Cum back in the squad because no one wants him. Big chance. 3 2. Ooh. Pereira again. Second of the game. And it's a lovely goal. Really? Oh, God. Pereira. He puts it past the goalkeeper. Keeper gave, showed him. Showed him the goal. And he just put it straight there. 3 2. Squeaky bomb time. And there is a highlight with seven and a half minutes to go. Oh no, we're on positive. Button has been caught out and PSV are coming back here. It's a bad cross, but they're going to keep that one in and the highlight is not going to win just there. And it's Burma now. It gives it out to the left back. We'll put it in there. And the top of the table, PSV have come back and hit us where it hurts. And it's now Venlo free, PSV Eidhoven free. And what a game it's been. But from 3 0 up, they've pulled it back. Don't know what to say to our lads. Butner's had a bit of a shocker out on that left back, but we're just going to go for it. Butner puts it in there. Brewster's there with the header. And he heads it over the top of the bar. Can we do something? Do you know what? If someone had said to me 3 3 before the game against PSV, I would have bloody taken it. So I'm not going to lie. And a draw keeps us in those UEFA Cup positions. But I'm, am I counting my chickens just to. It looks like I'm having a torrid time if you're watching these episodes and not really keeping up to date with what's actually happening in the league. And we've just lost from being 3-0 up. Oh, God. Just got to keep remembering that we're overachieving at the minute. We are overachieving as a football club. That's hurting me. That's hurting me, that, ladies and gentlemen. Sympathise with you, lads. I really do. It goes down as a thriller. Oh, it was frightening, all right. It was stuff of nightmares in the end. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, let's just have a quick look where we are in the league. We do stay in fourth, but we are now on the same points as Wilhelm. It's just our goal difference is much, much better than theirs. We're 10 points away from Ajax now, so the, the title is out of it. We're not, we're out of that. So the two major things that we need to be looking forward to this season, UEFA Cup, sticking in this fourth position, and that cup competition where we play the semi-final. And that's where I think... That we're going to come back next. I think we're going to play these next two games. These are against bottom of the table Sparta. And then 50th place PEC Vuelio. And then we're going to come back for the semi-final against FC Groningen. We lost to them earlier in the season. We're going to get some revenge on them. Two defeats in a row just there. Against two of the big boys in the league. So I'm not too disappointed. Just a bit downhearted. But again, 4-3 after going 3-0 up against other teams. They're not going to have the quality to come back like PSV did. So... Yeah, I'm going to come back. It's going to be just the one game in two games' time. So I will see you very, very shortly. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I have. If you have, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and share it amongst family and friends on social media, uh, a platform of your absolute choice. You want to stay up to date with the things that I'm up to, then follow me at Captain Benny Man FM. There is the information. If you want to be part of a football manager community, then I will let you be part of Passion for FM if you want to be. Go to the description below. And just check out the Facebook page, the website, and also the Twitter page. But most importantly, check out the Discord page because that's where we interact with one another. And that's where our community just spend most of their time. Especially with the new release of Football Manager and the release coming out a couple of days ago. That place has been absolute wildfire. I also want to just give a massive shout out to them as well because they just continue to give me massive support. And, and to you guys as well for continuing supporting me. It's been a fantastic start to football manager 2020 and i hope you're enjoying these videos as much as i have well i'm gonna be back in a couple of days time for the semi-final so i will see you right then